recording. And the recording is in progress. And Dave, I'll let it up to you. Just uh, give us a quick introduction about yourself and then go at it. All right. Well, thanks again for inviting me. Sorry we couldn't do it at the bank and see you all live, but this will do just as good. <laughs> I've done them on Zoom, I've done them on YouTube, and I've done them live. And I just got back from Detroit and we did one live there. Um, and for today, um, first off, I'm, my, my name is David R. Becker. Don't forever get the R because there's a lot of other artists who are named David Becker. So always uh, my website that you can see up here in the corner, or is it right there? There's my website. Want to see anything you want to do, um, just go to my website and it's all on there. Every Thursday night, I do a demonstration also. Um, so I'm very used to this. Every Thursday night, I um, do a paint along where I um, let people paint along with me. But usually, it's just watching me and they ask them questions. And then they go ahead and what, paint it afterwards. And then afterwards, they post it on my Facebook group page, which is Becker Art, uh, Becker Art Group. And that's on Facebook. And then we, if they have questions and stuff, and usually I try to answer the questions in the chat room. And I think tonight, um, maybe somebody, one of you can um, guard the chat room and just, you can ask the questions for me. And like, like Jeff said, if you want to ask a question while I'm painting, just um, unmute yourself and ask away. I love questions and you just keep on asking. I will do two tonight because normally I do, I paint pretty fast. And so I told Jeff in the interview he gave to me that I will be doing one on black paper and it's acrylic. We're doing acrylic tonight and we're going to do one acrylic and we're going to do one on black paper and one on white paper on white paper. And actually we're not doing it on paper. We're going to be doing it on a board that I primed with a gesso um, with a ground gesso that usually I use for watercolors. And, but we're going to do that on a board and I'll let, I'll let you know what that is as soon as we get started. But before I get started, I just want to go through um, some a couple of things here that I normally do. And I want to show you um, again my website. My website here again is um, beckerart.net. You can sign up for my newsletter that I give out every every Tuesday tomorrow and tomorrow morning. My newsletter will come out and about what we're painting. But you can also go to my website, find out what we're painting on Thursday. And again, it's all free. Um, you can come to my classes on. I do one in uh, McHenry and one in Libertyville. The one in Libertyville is the one that I do on Thursdays in the um, afternoon before I do the painting in the evening. We do the same painting and it's all on beckerart.net or my name, David R. Don't forget the R, becker.com. So that's my way. And the supplies we're using today, um, I'm going to be I'm using all Holbein products and I'm using all these different acrylics. I'm using ink acrylics, which come in these bottles. And um, we also have the, um, uh, uh, what do you call them, liquid acrylics. <laughs> so the fluid acrylics, the ink acrylics, and then we have gouache acrylics, which come in tubes, and the heavy body, which also come in tubes. And we were working on Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press Black. And um, we also will be working on, not on this aqua cold, now I thought about it, because I found I wanted to do this on this board. So we won't be doing on that. And so let me just show you some of the things I've done on black. And these are some of the things I've done on black paper. Um, this a lot, Most of these were demonstrations, just like I'm doing tonight. This one right here was a um, on black paper at NAMPTA. It was a big show at, exhibition in Orlando. Again, these are very fast. And th this is black paper. This is black paper. Uh, this was a pencil study I did on black paper, as long as this one was also a pencil. Uh, these were watercolor, watercolor, pencil, pencil, acrylic. This one is acrylic, and these were done on white paper. Um, this, uh, this kind of um, abstractish boat was done on white paper and the Stonehenge white. And this one over here was in a demonstration I did, and that's maybe even online, I'm not sure. I think I did it up at Dillman's. And then also I did a couple night scenes. Um, I did this night scene. I, I go plein air painting now a lot. And so I sometimes I go plain, plain air at night, and this is also a watercolor, a watercolor up in Grand Marais. I just got back about three weeks ago. Three or four weeks ago now, and um, this painting up here in the upper left won my won the nocturnal scene, so that was that was an award for that. This one on the right was just a um, thing I just had done for um, who was that for? That was um, <laughs> another art um, company in uh, Oakbrook. I was in Oakbrook, and so I did a um, Oakbrook Art League. So let me just um, so those are the kind of things I'm doing. And tonight, like I said, I'm gonna be doing this on this um, board, and this is just a hard board. And I took 
um, gesso ground, golden absorbent gesso ground. So it absorbs. So it's not like just regular gesso. It's absorbent gesso. And what that white gesso does is you can make water, you can do watercolor in it. Even though I'm doing acrylic today, I'm going to be working like a watercolorist. And I worked, I started out like a watercolorist and I finished it like an acrylic painter. And I could even go to farther. I could even put um, oils on there, but I don't do that. I won't be doing that. <laughs> um, let me just show you a couple um, less. Let's see, uh, two days ago, uh, Saturday, these are, I went up in Michigan for the Michigan Watercolor Society. And I had done this um, demonstration, this one right here and this one right here, um, both done within 90 minutes. And so, like I said, we'll be doing two tonight for you too. Just very quickly, very quick um, things. And so we'll be doing that tonight. Um, two, two, one on black and one on white. Here's what I did up in Green Bay about a week and a half ago. This was in Green Bay for the Northeast Wisconsin Waterhouse Society. This is a scene from um, the Mediterranean in France. This is that night scene you just saw. This is the night scene. So again, both of these were done in, in the, like a, about a 90 minute time period. So I work pretty fast and that's be all because I worked as an illustrator for an advertising agency. And um, it got me to do things very quickly. And where was this? Or I could, actually, this one was the one up in Green Bay. The other one, what, what the heck was the other one? Oh, the other one was the Oprah one. So this was the Green Bay one. This is the Green Bay. This is on white, and this was um, done on black. And a lot of these um, post things I took and did on paper. This is on black paper, but I mounted it to a board. And um, I mounted it with um, acid-free glue. I think it's called Lanco. Lanco glue. You can get it on Amazon. And I just um, glued the back, and I rolled it down. And I have it all ready. This is 16 by 20, so I can stick it right into a frame. So all my watercolors now, I just wax. I wax them with this Dorlin wax that oil painters use, and it makes it hard as varnish. And then I can just put them into a frame. So again, that was just what I did for the other um, demonstrations. There was like three in a row with this last. Um, actually, it was four. I also did a pencil on black, but that was also a Zoom meeting. So I don't have that one here at the moment, I gotta send that off to them. And so here we're gonna do this again, this scene it will be done and it's a European scene you can see up here. In the, I make it black and white just because I, I don't wanna see the colors. I normally just don't like to see the black and white because that's the most important thing about my about my painting is that I know that I have a good value pattern. And then usually I work with the uh, Photoshop to make those things. I sometimes sketch them, sometimes I sketch them with pencil. But I've worked so many paintings and um, that a lot of times I have that photographic memory where I can pretty much pick up my value study in my head. I just know what I want to do with the lights and darks because my lights basically come down to the middle here and go right you know, around this person. So that's pretty much my light and everything else is going to be my dark. I don't, talk, I don't think middle tone. I think when it comes to my um, values pattern, I think black and white. And because middle tones don't really matter because there's so many middle tones a lot of times. So these middle tones, like this middle tone right here is more into the light because it crosses over when it gets to like a little bit lighter than these dark. So this is all basically dark. And yes, there will be some lights in my middle tones um, in my darks, but very few so that that the composition where it goes right down the middle of light, that's going to be my composition basically. And again, if you guys have any questions and I will, I will what I'll do is I work along work on this one and when I need to have this one dry, then I'll just pick up and I'll be doing this scene. And um, I noticed that my, my camera, when I put the black paper down, everything else gets really light because it's trying to focus in on the black paper. So everything else gets really, really bright, but there's nothing I can do about that. So we're just gonna have to deal with that. And actually that's a good, it's, a, it's okay because you, you're just looking at this part anyways and using still see the colors. And again, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and just ask away. If you do them into the chat, uh, maybe there's somebody can um, ask me um, through the chat that's you know that's listening. Yeah. That, because I'm not looking at the chat. I don't have any time. I'll, to I'll the watch chat. the chat. What's that? I'll watch the chat for you. Okay, if you watch the chat and just ask me the questions that they ask. Yep. And I will try to answer anything that you can ask me. <laughs> or they can unmute and ask yourself. Themselves. Yeah, or just unmute and just ask away. And I love people asking questions because you know, it gives me something to talk about. <laughs> and um, I do talk usually all the way through it because I tell you everything I'm doing, everything I'm using, everything, uh, what color I'm using. And and so let's just get started here. And so I can do the two. And it was there a certain time limit that what time was this supposed to go on? So, uh, it, 
Uh, well, originally we were going to have like a, what be one, one demonstration, then have a break, and then another demonstration. But since we're doing it live, everyone can take the break, you know, whenever they want. Okay. So, so okay, I may have to take a break myself. So we'll see. If you want to take a break, just holler. Yeah. We'll let you take a break. And <laughs> so um, I, on every Thursday night when I do my uh, at six thirty every Thursday night, I do a paint along. And um, there's always some kind of thing that we're doing. This week we're going to be doing, and they don't even know that yet, but it's probably on my website right now. It's um, of a car. We're going to be doing a, um, a truck, basically an old truck that's going to have a lot of um, rust on it. And every Thursday, I always toast everybody with a beer that I usually gets from the area that I'm at. And I always rate it from one to 11, the paintbrushes. And tonight we're going to do the same. And so I'm going with a lining kugels, which I never tried before, a juicy peach. And so <laughs> we're going to try a juicy peach. Let's see where it's going to go. A juicy peach from lining kugels. And so we'll just cheer, toast everybody on. You can go ahead and if you want to drink something, go ahead. Have a glass of wine. It is evening. I know that usually can't do this when I'm doing my Zoom meetings in there in the middle of the day, but in the evening we can um, toast. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Here's to a good painting that I do. <laughs> I'm going to let the phone go down before I read it. All right. And so let's get started here. And this is board again. This is board with gesso ground on it. And so it acts like watercolor paper but it kind of acts like a hot press. And so I'm gonna do the sky first. And it, the, my sky is my lightest, so I gotta keep it very, very light. And so I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with like a yellowish sky because I'm gonna kind of go with more of a violety brown um, buildings and then have more of a yellowish sky. And I just decide that because it's just how I feel. You know, I don't, um, the photograph may have been something different, but I don't like always using the photograph because a lot of times the photograph can be dull, you know, or gray and stuff. And so I can I can make it better than the photograph. And a lot of times I like to make it better than the photograph. I want to give more um, emotion, a mood in it. And if it's just the blue sky in the middle of the day, and it just that doesn't give me as much emotion as if if there's something, you know, something more. Let me just put something underneath the back here. Hold on. But I see there's a reflection in the in it already. There we go. Let's just put it up a little bit so you can't see the reflection. And I go right through the dark things. I don't care about the dark parts. This is the light. I always work with my lights first. And since I'm working it like watercolor, even though it's acrylic, I'm using it like watercolor. It still acts like because I'm I'm using this. These are fluids right here. In my outer circle, there's my fluids. On the inner part, there's my gouache and my uh, heavy body. And so this is inks and um, things. And so they act like watercolors because they're, I almost, they act like watercolors where they're kind of really fluidy. And so I, I can use it like that. And I use white even in my watercolor now because I can tend to like my, make my colors more pastel-like. And the yellows usually are really very vibrant colors. And so I like to take white and tone them down a little bit, my yellow. And I may even put the sky or the sun right here in the, in the edge. And um, so I may put white right here and make that like where the sun is going to be shining, maybe right there. And that will make the building really nice and orange in there. And since I'm doing the light parts first, I might as well go right through all this. And I want to make it like the sun is going to be hitting a lot of these parts, right? Because it's really bright. And when the sun is really bright, sometimes it gets to that point where it's white and it's so bright. And actually, I'm going to make this scene more of like it just had rained and now it's lit up. Sun's about to come out again. It's just you know more in the evening, and the streets are going to be wet. Again, I like taking the photo from a normal everyday kind of scene and really upping it, making it something more than it is. And so I'm just taking my lights and working my lights first, working the lights. And so this yellow would reflect down into the street because, and it, you don't have to worry about the dark, the people or this cart back here and go right through it. Why? Because it's like a watercolor on top of it, I can get darker. With acrylics, usually when you work just acrylics, basic acrylics, usually you work your darks first. And that's because you're using them real thick. I could do that too, because I am gonna be working thick with it later on, but I still, I'm such a watercolorist that I like doing the watercolor technique first and that's going through everything and doing everything light first. And then later on going through it with my darks on top of that. And I can still uh, make everything like um, I can still make everything really dark uh, later and then put big loads of white on top of that. That's still, I can still do that. 
but I'm just such a watercolorist. I've learned, learned my whole life. I've been a watercolorist. So for me to do it like the acrylic way, it's hard for me. <laughs> so I just basically do what I can do and it all works. Any questions about anything, let me know. So this is wet. I did it on, on a dry surface and so it's getting wet, but I noticed when I use acrylic, sometimes I get a lot more um, vibrant for some reason. I have no idea why. I just sometimes get more vibrant with my colors. It's like I don't mix as much or something in there. It's like straight out of the tube, which sometimes is a bad thing. <laughs> but um, like I even have colors like this one right here is almost fluorescent. And you probably don't see that on camera as much as I do. See, there, there's a really bright. And that's actually like a red. And so I'm just going to let that flow through here. And again, I work my lights and I go and here, we'll do this lady's space real quick. We'll do all my lights, all the lights that are in the, in the scene and the light colors, because those will be done. And then I'll go right back into it later and do my medium darks and my medium, medium, yeah, me, my mediums and my darks, I do my second wash. I do all my paintings in three steps. Basically all my paintings are done in three steps. That's what I've been teaching lately. I just got back from Detroit from the Detroit Watercolor Society and did a three-day workshop for them along with a demonstration I just did on Saturday. But we were three days and the main thing I kept on telling them is that, you know, work your work your watercolors in three, three ways, three steps. The first step being your lights. You know, again, this is for watercolor, but can be used, like I'm using acrylic, it can still be used for acrylic too, where you do your lights first, you pick up your light color schemes, your color scenes and everything. So I know I'm using a lot of yellow. So that means I'm probably going to use this complement, a lot of purple. And so I'll do that. I'll use a lot of purple. And then I, that doesn't mean purple. I consider to be also brown. Brown and purple are very close cousins. And so you can do a little bit of that too. And the nice thing is about this, if I put my light washers down, I still can make all my dark darks and I can put my lights back in if I do want it later heavy bodied and go really thick with it, I can still do that. It's still super fine to do that. But right now I'm just kind of going in here, getting those, getting those nice washes. Now I don't have as much floating pigment, like I don't get much granulation because I hardly use it. It's sucking it in. This is called um, absorbent ground. It's absorbent ground gesso by Golden, and it's absorbing a lot of my pigment. And so if I'm going to be want that watercolor look where it's kind of um, floating on top of the surface, then I'm going to have to use a lot, a lot of pigment. And so for that, if I need to have a lot of pigment, I also have to use white because um, if I want a light pigment, I'm going to have to put a little white in there and just um, make it a little bit lighter than what I want it to be. And again, you know, you can use this kind of style for anything, really. It doesn't have to be just watercolor. It's acrylic. You know, I'm, I'm actually using acrylic paints. These are four different kinds of acrylics. And I can, um, nice thing I like about watercolor in this, in this instance is that I don't have to ever um, soften an edge. Edges, when you're doing them in a wet wash, soften themselves. And so I don't have to do anything. And that's like, I'm, I'm kind of a lazy painter in that aspect. I'm kind of very lazy. And that's like, I like watercolor so much because it does a lot of it for me. I don't okay, have to Dave. soften the edge. The edge softens itself. And what, how great is that? <laughs> Dave, I have a question for you. Yeah. Can you use this on regular watercolor paper or does it only work on the gesso surface? Uh, no, it uh, works on, definitely works on the regular paper too. I love it on, that's mostly what I do on regular paper too. Yeah, I don't um, differ from, I try not to make anything different from my paper to this board. It really is not that much different. It may act more like a, um, well, this actually acts like a piece of paper because it's really absorbing a lot. I'm not sure if you can tell that while I'm painting, but it uh, absorbs a lot of the pigment into the paint, into this board. This is basically a hard board. This is the stuff you buy at um, Menards. You know, it's a hard board. It's eighth inch. This one is an eighth inch thick. Um, mostly you can find them half inch or quarter inch thick. But for some reason, I found one. Um, I forgot where I found this. But I found one that was actually an eighth of an inch, which I was not, not as heavy because I really don't like some of those heavy ones. They're just way too heavy for me. So now I'll go in the back here and I'm going to make what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a warm background, cool foreground, just so that the background will have the warmth of the sun. And then have, as I come forward, I'm going to bring these things into shadow with like a violet -y blue. You know, and then um, I'm not sure why I just dipped in the blue because I'm not using the foreground yet. 
let's get this background done here real quickly. And like I said, I'm gonna make it warm so I can go with some oranges and some warm colors. What's that? So we have a question. Gene, did you have a question? Somebody's breaking up a little bit here. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna mute him. So see, I'm making those parts in the back warm as I come forward. I'm gonna I'm gonna get dark um, darker and also get cooler with my colors. This is just the background, so I don't have to be that detailed with it. And I'm going to put a lot of orange, a really bright orange, right over here where the sun is going to be. I'm almost going to make this like the sun is burning away. I call this optical scatter, which I learned from Carl Bretzky in a mini workshop up in Grand Marais while I was in the plein air. But he talked about how you have the sun, you know, it burns away the, the, the area because it's so vibrant and so bright that it takes and burns a, a section away because it's so bright. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that really orangey. And then as I come back later, I'll make it really quickly, I'll make it really dark. And so it'll look like the sun is right there burning a hole in that building right there. And so um, I'm ready to do my darks now because I think I've got all my lights that I possibly need that, for, that are back there. Everything else will be dark now, right? And so I may put a little bit of highlights um, Edge, edges of these this lady right here. And now I'm gonna get my darks. And so I, I'm gonna start on this side. No, that's why I start on this side so I don't have to go over it. But I always try to think if I go over here, I may, if I do this one, I'm gonna, when I come over with my water, it's gonna go right over it and I can ruin that edge. So I'm gonna go over here first and just wet everything. And I have a dirty brush with some of the colors I have in it, but that doesn't matter because everything here is gonna be really dark or darker. And so I'm going to pick up dark colors. So I've got a little purple here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red, a little bit of purple, black, maybe a little bit of black too. Just so I get dark right away. I don't have to, you know, people are so afraid of using black because they think it dulls the colors. All it does is darken the color, which, um, which is what you want, right? You know, so don't be afraid of using black. I know we've been always taught in school never to use black or mix your blacks, right? But, you know, I have found that people like uh, Andrew Wyeth and all those great artists have used black and so, or, or Payne's gray or those, those gray colors or those black colors and they use them. So I know you didn't learn to use them. You weren't supposed to use them, but go ahead and use black to darken some colors. It's a faster way of doing it. And you're still gonna get the color of, in there by adding colors into the black. And I was, I was, you know, boy, when I went to school, that was like a really big no-no. Don't use this, don't use that. And then when I went up to Maine one day and I went and was doing a workshop up there and I stopped in at the um, the Wyatt Museum there in Rockland, Maine. And I walk in and the first thing I see is this really, really dark blueberry, big, huge painting of blueberries and um, in a basket. And all he used was black and blue. I mean, that's all he used. And it was just the most beautiful painting. I'm thinking, wait a second, you know, how did he get that? And I know he just used black because there was no other color in it. It was just, set. he mixes blacks and it was just so beautiful. <laughs> I was like, you know what? He used it, why can't I use it? <laughs> so I use it now, I use it. And I also use white and I'll tell you later on why, but in my watercolors, um, and because Sargent did. John Singer Sargent used a lot of white in his watercolors and probably in his, um, I'm sure in his oils. <laughs> But um, so I started using them too, because uh, again, if John Singer Sarvin can use it, boy, I'm gonna use it too. I'm just making my darks again. I'm dipping in everything for my darks. And it ends up being kind of brownish, which is fine with me. You know, I want it kind of brown anyways. And this is not so much like a watercolor now because it's a little bit thicker, but I still have water and it's still blending itself a little bit, if you can tell. And um, it will dry 20% lighter just like watercolor because I still have more pigment or more water than pigment down. So I got to watch that out. So I got to watch out for that because it is still going to dry lighter, a lot lighter than you think. Usually about, like I said, uh, uh, about 20% about lighter. 
and I, I work my big areas first. I don't do any details until I get to my detail stage. I do this even if I were to do a photographic looking picture, I would still do this because I need to get those big pattern. I need to get a big pattern of light and dark work. And otherwise, why do I even do a value study? I have to get the values that my value study says I need. You know, it's so important. You cannot go away from that. You cannot defer away from your value study. It's just not possible. Uh, you can do different colors and all kinds of different colors, but you cannot, you've got to stick with the value pattern. That is a must. Tell my students, you know, uh, that's why you do them. And you can't all of a sudden just say, well, no, it's okay. I'm not going to do that, those values right there. No, you have to. You have to do those values. If it makes a painting look good in the photograph and you, and you did a nice value study and it looks good there, then you have to do them. You can switch away with the colors and stuff. You do this and that, but, you know, the values are the values. And again, um, if, you're, uh, if you're off a little bit about like the darks and lights of the actual value study, that's okay. As long as you figure out that this part has to be darker than the light part. You can make things a lot lighter if you make things lighter over here. So it's all based on your lightest light and darkest dark. And so you can still make your dark dark or not light, but they just cannot be as dark or as not as light as the lights in the light area. That's why I probably screwed that up, right? <laughs> Just follow your life, your um, value study. That's most important. So I'm going in here. With this lady. Again, I, I'm doing this is just basically a lay in and these colors. And later on, I will go in and I can um, do more of a heavy body thing where I do the um, thick acrylics. Now, right now, because it's like a watercolor, it's all floating. It's giving me soft edges where I don't have to go then go in and, and change them and make them look like something. You know, it's just, it's, and it looks really purple, but it's a lot grayer than you probably see in the screen. Screens tend to, I, I just found out that screens tend to make things brighter, more contrasty, more colorful, lighter. And it's because my phone broke and I, I was always taking pictures with my phone, even for like my works to show in like shows. And I finally, my camera broke and I started using my, my phone camera broke. And so I started using my other camera, my SLR. And what a difference. It really showed me that you shouldn't be using your phone camera for your taking pictures of your imagery that's gonna be printed or sent into a show because it just doesn't give you the mood that I was going for. And I, that's what I noticed um, just recently because my phone broke. So um, I'm just letting you know, just, Try to use something else besides your camera phone to, um, or scan it, scan your pictures. It's much, much better. So I'm just doing the darks. I'm putting a big wash in over this, because again, she's part of the dark area. This lady over here too. I'm gonna get a smaller brush if I'm doing this lady right here. I'm just gonna make her dark. I'm not putting any detail in. She's just part of the dark. I'm just kind of going in there real quickly, just putting in some, Things again because I'm not going detailed yet. I'm not going detailed. I'm going to even put this darker. I will give her more, um, give her more color in her face. But I will, I will uh, make it more dark because she's in the shadow, and my value study says that you can barely see her face, right? So I, I'm going to follow that. And later on, I'll go even farther and give her more detail. But right now, right now, right now, I'm just getting my big washes in so I can see the big wash, what things are going to be. And again, I can get as tight as I want. I can get absolutely tight as, as photographic as I want. But not right now. I've got to get this big stuff done first. And that's how come I can do paintings as quickly as I do, because I get those big parts done. And then I can just gauge it on how, how detailed I want to make it. If I don't want to make it too detailed, because a lot of these demonstrations that I do are not very detailed, but even though they look detailed because I got the big parts done. So people think they, they look like, oh yeah, he got a lot of detail in there, but no, no, I didn't. I just got the big parts that were more important than the smaller parts done. And then I can go in and wisp away and make it look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and so I'm a good faker. I can fake a lot of the things in the painting. Like, you know, the scene of all the, the, of all the intricate parts of a building, you know, that's enough to show that that's a building, right? And so then again, once it dries, I can go back in and kind of figure it out 
I can go back in and get the tiny, tiny details, ones that are a little bit more important, areas that are a little bit more important. But first, again, I've got to get the value study. I got to get the values in there so I can get a nice composition going here. I know I talk a lot, but please ask some questions, guys. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know if anybody's still there. <laughs> you guys still there? Anybody still there? No, we all I went home. I'm in my studio alone here. All right, so here, and I'm going back in the back here a little bit, getting a few more details. This little cart that's in front here, that's a little bit darker too. So I'm gonna get that really dark. A medium dark, I don't get the darkest darks yet because that, that's my third step. The third step out of my three-step program <laughs> is to do the detailed darks. That's when you do the, um, the final step is the detailed darks. Again, I'm getting the big stuff. I'm getting the big mediums, the big darks on my second step. And um, as large as I can get them. I have to try to figure out how can I get these large. You know, how, here this flag is not going to be detailed. I first got to get the um, the values of them, so I won't even get the colors. And this is probably somewhere in Europe, so I'm not quite sure what kind of flag that's going to be. Even I have no idea what where this is at. And so I'm going to put a little bit of like this glass in front of this thing here a little bit, glass in front of there. So it's a light part. My detailed darks will go on top of this. The detailed parts will be the things around it. Right now, I'm just going again, big, big parts. And now, remember, I said this is part of where the sun's going to be on there. So we're going to keep that nice and orangey, orangey, bright orange, even fluorescent here. It's going to put some really bright color right here, like the sun is just hitting right across there, burning that thing out with a white and yellow. And I put it, I, what I do is I, I buy um, a lot of uh, towels in um, Goodwill or anywhere I can find grass sales or anybody who's selling towels. I usually buy a towel for $2, $3. And I use the towel underneath all my paintings because I don't have to use the, um, paper towel everywhere. I just dab down anywhere around here and I just do it on the, on the towel. Just saves me a lot of paper towel. And then um, with acrylics, yes, it doesn't come off, but um, with watercolor, I just wash them, wash them, bleach them, and then I start them again. And they're not, they're not, they're not going to be totally white again, but who cares? It's just close enough. And they're clean enough for me to go back in. Let's go. Okay, big wash. Uh, now this whole thing is dark too, right? So you're going to see that it's going to take and make it nice and nice and nice and dark. And you can always, I'm wetting as I go along. I call this wetting is going along and watercolor. And then I add colors to it. So I use the paper or the board as my palette. And so instead of mixing over here, mix it on here, just see what happens. Because as long as it's wet, it's gonna be mixing itself. Watercolor mixes itself. You don't have to ever blend anything. Put a little hey, Dave. In there, make it really nice and dark. Dave? Yeah. Question, are you just mixing water with the paints? Yep. Just water. Just my bucket of water here. I'm just starting to get dirty here a little bit. And then I'm going to put a little bit more orange in this area, using a little bit thicker. It'll again, it'll again make this area look like the sun is right there, and it's going to give me the warmth because the sun is my light source. That's my light source. I have to take take everything and remember this is my light source, and everything comes from there. There's no other light source on on this on this scene, so that's my light source. Make it work. You have to think about all, all those things, like what's going on when the light hits this. Is there a shadow? Is it just an overcast and it's so bright that it looks like? But if you actually see the sun, then you're probably going to have some shadows. So I'm going down here. This is going to go to the tip here. How long after the painting is finished do you apply the wax? Um, it has to be totally dry. So as, as soon as it's dry, you're going to apply the wax. But like totally dry, bone dry. No dampness. You can't dry with its damp because then it'll probably pick something up. But it doesn't do anything to the the watercolor or the acrylic, especially the acrylic. And actually with acrylic, you don't have to put wax on <laughs> because it's acrylic. So um, I'm doing it like a watercolor. So I really don't have to wax this piece, though you can just to protect it. 
but um, acrylic is acrylic, and so it's yeah. What's the wax called? Dorland wax. Dorland. And that's if you're doing a watercolor, I use Dorland wax. How do you spell that? D O R L A N D. Oh, okay. Dorland wax, and it's oil painters use it, but it it becomes an emit and varnishes basically your varnishes your painting. So it's um, it's a great wax, and it's nice thing is is that um, now I can use watercolor and I can just put them in a frame without glass. If you're doing watercolor, and if you're not doing watercolor and acrylic, you don't have to use a mat anyway. So unless you're doing, I guess, um, color. Now it doesn't work with color pencil though. Don't put on your color pencil the wax, it'll it'll because it's like the same same kind of waxy things that the um the the um, pencils are and they'll just smir smudge them. But with watercolor, it doesn't smudge anything. It doesn't, it's not wet. It's very creamy and it doesn't do anything to the, doesn't do anything to the watercolor. So that's on illustration board and watercolor paper then? Yep. I've even waxed on Yupo, but it seemed like it took a while to dry and I'm not sure if it actually worked. <laughs> So now I'm putting in my darks, my middle tone into the street. I'm going to get some a little more texture. So I'm going across the paper or across the board. Now this board I did with gesso, and so I made it. I put it on with the gesso like it was an oil painting. Like I, I put brush strokes all around. So you're going to see if you look closely here. I'm not sure if you can see this, but see how it's kind of brush the brush strokes you can see of the white. I probably can't even see that. I'm not sure. But there's like brush strokes that will affect how I put the brush strokes on because it's um it's just so and it's it's thick. And so when I put it on, I put it on creamy, but I put it on so thick that I'm getting um like the a brush texture of the of the gesso. And so let me see, I gotta go in here. Gonna put a little bit of texture up here. Again, this was my big areas of um, big areas of middle tone darks and middle tones. So I'm just getting texture in the street. Just and you can again see brushwork of my gesso. It's taking effect, and that's kind of a neat thing that I like to do. And I'm going to put cobblestone in here, but not until I go to my finishing detail touches, my detail darks. That's what you wait for. I do wait for my detail darks. And I put darker parts over this lady, uh, make things darker. But sometimes you may not even have to, depending on where, where your darks are going to go. But these are not really dark, dark. Look at how this ended up so light. See, I remember it looked so dark before. Now it ends up being pretty light, right? And so um, this is the only part that's a little bit dark, but that's still wet. And so this will lighten up also. Nice thing about this is I can also rub out while it's wet. And um, I can also, if I rub really hard, even though it's acrylic, I can rub back to the back to the white board because it's not going to ruin the paper because it's not paper. It's a board with paint on it. And so let me um, let me let this dry. And let me um, go to my black paper, just so while this is drying, then we can I can under I can show you what I mean about the black paper and stuff. So I mean this has to dry, and I don't like I never like drying with a hair dryer because the paint the paint is still working itself, it's smoothing itself out, and if I rush it, then it won't smooth itself out like I like watercolor to do, even though this is not watercolor but watercolor technique, it's still the same because I'm using it wet and so. It's softening itself the edges, and if I dry it with a hair dryer, it's not going to keep on drying softly. And so I left all my these are my middle tone dark and darks. Now my darkest dark because those I, I set for my um, detail darks, and those will be the ones that make everything like this lady right here. Actually, I, let me put the middle tones in this lady here so that we have her middle toned out, and then I can go my get my other values in there later. But again, always the middle tones and darks. I don't go for my, for the large areas. I mean, I, I'm getting the large areas done and I'll go back in, get the detail darks. These are my medium and detail large area darks. 
I'm making her a little bit more colorful because of the sun is hitting this side of her body. And so let's make her just a little bit more colorful on that side. Then I can make her a little darker on the other side, like the shadows hitting this side. And even though I don't have much color into her night right now, I can always put more of that in there too, afterwards, later on. She's holding some kind of case. Maybe let's make her a little bit darker than that. Maybe that's a little bit too dark right now because I don't want that for later. But if I if I floating it in the pigment into the water, then it's floating. So it will it will dry lighter too, and it'll give me more of an effect. And I can actually get put some of the orange back into this light because I have to follow the value study. The value says that she is the darkest part against the lightest light. And so that's how come she pops out really nicely. So you gotta, again, follow your value study. There's a reason that you do them. Not just to do them just because I said so. <laughs> there's there's a purpose to why you do a, um, a value study. And even as an acrylic painter or oil painter, I still do value studies. I know a lot of oil painters that do um, thumbnails but I do more of a value study because I think it's more important than anything else. Again, even if I do, doesn't matter what I do. I always, I always do it, whatever medium I'm working on, I'm always doing a value study. Now these are reflections because the street was wet. I'm making the street wet. And so we're going to make reflections, not shadows. These are reflections that are going downwards. And then I'll put in shadows later that go from the sun's there. And so there'll be some shadows, but right now those are not shadows. Those are reflections. I can put a couple of these a little more. This is middle tone things, and these are like middle tones, and so I can put some of these in there. I, a lot of times when I have things in my brush, I kind of use it up so that I know this is more of a, um, so it matches the colors and stuff. So I know that I'm gonna have to go back in here anyways later, so I might as well use some of this color in my brush that I need that's like a light middle tone, and just put this stuff down back there and get that done. Little light medium middle tone things there. <laughs> Question anybody? Questions? Questions? Let me know. A little bit of yellow here. Hey Dave, what kind of brushes are you using? I'm using watercolor brushes. And my watercolor brushes. I sell brushes. I sell these six brushes. And so I'm using my uh, watercolor brushes. I'm using my flat right now. And actually, actually, this is uh, my, yeah, this is my flat. Or actually, this is a filbert. Uh, I should be using this one, but I usually like this one, the tap inch. But they're, um, they're watercolor brushes. But because I'm doing like a watercolor wash, I use watercolor brushes. And um, I have a, uh, my own set that I have made um, that they're Holbein Golds. And they're um, acrylic nylon or nylon. Um, nylon brushes. So, okay, let's put this aside for a second and um, we'll come back to this one and I put in my detailed darks and then we can go on and I can show you what the difference is on starting on a black sheet of paper and do the same type of thing. Cheers, everybody. I didn't, have, I didn't even rate this yet. So, cheers, guys. I got to rate this beer. <laughs> I didn't even take a step yet. Okay, very fruity. The fruity beer, I guess it's called peach. <laughs> it's called uh, juicy peach. So yes, it's very juicy and um, it's very peachy. And since if you like if you like a good um, beer that's more sweet, then that's one for you. I would give it like a eight and a half. Is that from a microbrewery? What's that? Is that from a microbrewery? No, that's the Lion Kugels. Oh. That was just Lion Kugels beer. Yeah, this is just line and Kugel's juicy peach. <laughs> All right, black paper. So this is black watercolor paper made by the same company that makes my white Stonehenge aqua paper. It's a paper made by Legion Paper Company. And let me just get the other thing in here. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me just turn this off and put this in there because we're going to be doing this scene now. And it's just a night scene. And... There's no reason to do a daytime scene on black paper because it'd be so light, you know, why not do it on white paper? But if you're doing a night scene, the best uh, ones I've ever done is always on black because everything is dark anyways. So 
it's nice to have everything almost halfway done. And so it's easy, easy, easy to make a, a night scene on black paper because there's so much black in a night scene. And all you have to do then is work opposite of what I did with watercolor on white paper is that I worked the big dark light areas or big dark areas where I worked the big light areas. I just worked everything opposite. So I go in there and I will find the big areas that are dark and color the, my black paper. And this has helped me when it comes to actually coloring my light paper because you have to learn how to use the white of the paper to get your color. And with the black, you do the same thing. So the black color of this building, let's say this color building right here, it's black, right? It's dark. It's probably like a red brick, let's say a red brick, but I'm not gonna make it bright red. So I'm just gonna take some red and because it's dark black paper, I just have to put a wash, a light wash over this and it will dry 20% darker instead of 20% lighter. It looks really light right now, right? Because it's not gonna be that way because it's just like watercolor on white, you learn how much pigment to use to make this thing cover up black paper. That's a transparent wash. And once it dries, you'll see that red brick will look almost, almost black. And it looks really light right now because there's water and it's reflecting the light in my area. So um, maybe I have to put a board underneath this thing so that it will stay, so I can put a little thing underneath it. Just put a board there. A little bit bigger than the board, but that's okay. And again, I'll put something underneath it to stop it from reflecting. All right, so now I'll go in here and I'll do the back sky. It's a big area. I'm gonna want it to be like, you know, maybe a very much in the evening. So I'm gonna put a blue, put a blue up back there. And again, it's transparent and it's watercolor paper. And so it tends to um, act like watercolor paper. It has sizing, it's sized throughout. And uh, I'm just putting a clear wash, transparent wash of blue. And I know that's gonna get really dark, but I want it dark. I just want it to be a little bit lighter, but I want my black to have a blue tinge to it. So it feels like it's nighttime and, and it's really dark. I don't wanna make it light too light. I just wanna make it a little bit like it's nighttime and get a nice blue sky. You know, you get that like really bluish look to your things and it's transparent. so it's gonna definitely get darker than you see it right now. It looks really kind of light. It gets almost black again, uh, depending on how much paint you use. This really has helped me a lot when it comes to learning how to mix my colors and do transparently with the white, because then you start note, you start using the paper more, more, you start looking to the white. Okay, how much paint do I need to put into the white to get that color? Or here, I, how much paint do I use to make this black look a lot um, dark, but still get a little bit of color into it. Because it is a dark, dark sky and you can actually leave it totally black if you're doing like a limited palette. But I wanna make the sky look blue, like in the evening, a lot of times it looks really blue. And so I still wanna get that in there, but I don't want it too, too bright. And I just dipped into something accidentally, some purple. So that's gonna be purple now, that's okay. And I don't want to go into this building, which is darker. So I'm just going to go around it. And so I'm doing my big darks, big dark area. And for these lights that are on, I'm going to do them small and I'm going to do them later on. And I may even do them with an airbrush, which I got to see if I have around. <laughs> I forgot where I put the thing. Um, I, um, I work with an airbrush, a small little airbrush. We may have to take a break because I may have to find it because I totally forgot about that. Hey, Dave. The airbrush that I use to um, spray a little bit of um, of the ink acrylic, and it'll give me a nice light. Though I'm, I'm going to try to do it first with a water with water and thing, but it's somewhat easy to do it with um, with an airbrush. Hey, Dave. Yeah. What did you use for the underdrawing on the black? Oh, um, I used a um, charcoal pencil. And let me see if I can find it. It's a um, general pencil, uh, charcoal pencil. It's a general's charcoal white pencil. Uh, where's the camera? It's a, yeah, it's a general pencil, white. And um, nice thing is, is that the white chalk acts as pigment. And so like, if I make an area light, like if I need to know that this area back here, if I look at my picture, this right here, it's really light. Then I can just do this and then this becomes pigment. It's a chalky, and so this is just basically chalk. And so when you put water on it, it 
turns into pigment basically. And so mixed with other white, you know, watercolor white, it stays there and, and it actually dis dissolves and becomes pigment. You know, it's kind of neat. So then when you're going in here, when I'm drawing it, I can, I can pretend like I'm drawing the light. I can just go in here and go, okay, that's going to be the light right there. You know, this is going to be a light. That's going to be a light. And so I can draw and also pretend like I'm lighting up the scene already. And so, yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. Like right here is going to be a little light. So when I, so I know that this area, it's kind of hard to draw it and kind of know what's going to be light and dark um, because everything is dark. Um, but then if you just use a pencil, you can just kind of fill it in and just fill it in and, and it'll go away. Cause like with a, with a regular lead pencil, it's hard to erase sometimes here. It's not, it's just going to dissolve anyways. So you can just put it in and then just actually you could probably, I'm waiting for um, to use some whole buying watercolor pencils I figure with watercolor, but then, then again, I'm using acrylic this time. So I keep on forgetting I'm using acrylic so I don't have to worry about that. I can just um, put it right on top with white paint or a regular pencil, like a, a color pencil. I can use that too. And again, there's no color in this um, image, but I've known long enough, I've done enough um, night scenes to know what color things are. A street is usually what, gray? And then I think to myself, okay, do I want the background to be cool and the foreground to be warm, right? Because usually that's what it happens is the background is very cool. And as you're coming towards the lights, the lights usually are those um, uh, incandescent lights and they're warm and orangey. So you're going to make that parts orange. So I'll, I'll dip into orange like this. I'll dip into orange and I will put a little wash of orange through here because the light around the lights are going to be a little bit of orange. And this looks really bright. I know it looks really like, what's he doing, right? But it's going to dry a lot, lot darker than that. And so, you know, it's again, know your material, work with your material, with your materials and know how they work. You can't just um, start painting on material that you never worked for. So what, what I suggest my students when they work black paper is at first just mess around with black paper. Don't try to do a painting. Or if you're doing a painting, just consider it a sketch. You know, consider it being something that you're um, sketching and trying it and see how it, how it handles and how much paint you got to use. That's with everything in art, um, art supplies. It's like if you've never used something before, make sure that you try it. Don't and now with a painting, now with a painting you're doing the first time <laughs> um, that you need to maybe even do a commission. No, you got to work it and actually try it and feel how it works and what 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 characteristics does it do when you're doing giving it a wash. Or I mean, it took me a while to learn how to use this paper, and I've been one of the artists that was lucky enough to, from the beginning of the time when they were inventing this paper they had me test it and they want to see how much sizing they needed. And so I, all the way through the testing of this paper, I had, I had worked with it from the beginning to the, to the part where they finally made it right. And um, it's been great. It's been fun because now I have a bunch of paintings and I think I'm going to start to call myself the artist that works on black paper because that's, I mean, everything I do on black paper sells like crazy compared to my stuff on white paper. People just think it's so, interesting and different you know you're doing a lot of moody scenes right because it's nighttime and and again this is acrylic I started out like a watercolor even though it's acrylic and nice thing is I can also use black on top of this stuff so if, let's say I get too white or too light with things then I go back in there later on and normally I don't get too dark because or too um too dark yes because it, it looks really light right now, but watch when it dries. It just dries so, so dark. It looks light right now because it's reflecting the light. It's reflecting the light. See how it's reflecting the light in the top? I have to bend it up a little bit more. Let's see, I put some put this underneath there. And so it's reflecting light. And so, um, and that goes into your eye, making it look like it is really, really light, but it's not. It's, it's dark when it dries. So what is the weight of that paper? The paper I'm using here is 300 pound and they make 140. They make pads, they make sheets. Um, they're just two inches shorter than a regular sheet of white watercolor paper because of the process. They couldn't make it 22 by 30, they make it 20 by 30. Um, but other than that, it's the same as like any other watercolor that you use, paper that you use, except it's, it's black. And so it's very interesting. And I know a lot of people who are watercolors go, you know, what, why, how, how, we can't use that. But yes, you can. You just have to use more of a white then because 
there is no white in the paper, so you definitely have to use white. I mean, there's no no doubt about it, no doubt about it that you have to use white. And if you've been taught, you know, through your whole life in art school to never use white, it's kind of hard for those artists to get away from that. But since there is no white in the paper, you have to use white to get a light color. And you don't prep it or nope. Or... It, you just do it like watercolor paper. Like you know, if you don't prep watercolor paper. You act like it's just white watercolor paper. It's the same as white watercolor paper. It's sized inside and out. It's um, everything that white watercolor paper is, but black. It's the exact same thing. And you can do acrylics on it. You can do gouache on it. Um, something I think is more, um, I like using this paper better with, with acrylics like this than watercolor because watercolor tends to seem kind of chalky when I'm using um, white with it. But with the acrylic wash, um, I can just start it like a watercolor, but I can get in there with some really nice colors and, um, and make it thicker. I can make the pigment thicker. Now I'm just coloring my darks again. I'm still on my light stage where I'm coloring. I'm still coloring. I'm coloring away. I'm coloring areas that are dark. I know it seems strange that I'm coloring uh, like like they do the watercolor paper, I color it light. I do my lights first. Well, this is I'm doing my darks first, the big area darks. And then I get lighter and lighter and lighter. Where on the white paper, I'm getting darker and darker and darker. It's just opposite, and you work the big till it's small. You got to kind of shift gears because you do have to work that way because it's just what it is. It is what it is. It's black paper, so you just have to do those things. Let me stand up for a second here and get a straight line. Okay, just gonna go in here real quickly. And now that this is, I got all my darks, I'll go back to my white paper, finish that one off, and then we'll finish this one off with my lights. Um, my um, lights, because again, you always have to let the pigment work, work its way in. So I work it pretty wet, and then when I gotta get my um, detailed dark lights, I gotta make sure that this is not is not wet, which it usually dries faster because you don't use that much pigment. I haven't used that much water. Oh, let me use a little bit more water here because I don't have much here. That's kind of lighter, lighter right here. Make it kind of like a a grayish color. And again, it's like a wash, a wash of watercolor, and it's going to make some light in here. And I'm doing it wet in the wet so I can get these reflections soft. And so I'm doing it wet. Bring it right down into that. Like when you're using um, watercolor um, and you want a soft edge, you got to wet the surface. It's the only that's the only way you get um, soft edges in watercolor. You wet it because the, the watercolor does it all, all on its own. You don't have to ever soften an edge in watercolor. You just let it soften itself. Now I'm going to put um, a really nice bright white here. I'm just going to take it down, and I'm just going to let it blend itself first, and then later on I'll put the thick stuff on. Right now I'm putting the thin stuff on. And I want it to blend itself softly because it's wet right here, right? And so I don't have to blend. I want it to do it by itself. Like I said, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, very lazy. I don't want to do anything that I don't have to do. So if I can let it blend itself, that's so much better for me. And I'm using fluids down here. It's fluid. Actually, this is ink. This is ink acrylic. I used ink a white. And so that's really, really wet. I can't hold a pigment um, still because it's too watery. Go in here and here's a reflection of the car. On this side, we got the reflection of the car too. And here I use a little bit thicker white uh, because I can, I can just make that a little bit thicker and then on this side of that, there's a pole right there. So I'm negative painting in opposite. I'm making keeping things dark. So I'm a negative painting in opposite form. And actually, this is the pole. This is okay. Wait a second here. Oh, I see. This is a pole. This is just a sign. This is all. That's not dark. So this is all light here. Okay, that's all light. 
looking at my drawing, I, I was a little bit off on my drawing because the pole's right over here. I put it over here. It's actually more right here. So I'm gonna make that darker right here. And I'm not worrying about the spotlights, the lights there. I'll show you how to do those in a little bit. And the top of a car is usually light because it's like cars are like a um, like anything that's reflective, you know, like water. And I think because cars are like a mirror, and so is water. It's like a mirror, so it's reflecting what's above it, and the hood and everything that's reflective will reflect things. And so you just got to think. You know, what's reflecting in there? The light, of course, is reflecting in there. The side of the car is. Later on, I'll be putting in the head or the tail lights and all that. Now I'll go down here and shift it off a little bit because this street is not perfectly, you know, poured. And so there's going to be little things happening here and there. There could be like a little gutter right here. This maybe is reflected into the street lightly. You get a few lines coming through here. Little puddles here and there. Here's the line of the street, maybe is even in here. You guys are very, very quiet. <laughs> is anybody still there? <laughs> I hope somebody's still there watching. Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're watching. We're just amazed, <laughs> speechless. Mesmerized. So I'm getting in my all my um a little bit of the lights in there. I'm putting in my medium lights, not my lightest lights. Putting them to show that's coming through. Here, there's a tree back there, and then there's gonna be a shadow on the tree underneath. Building. Maybe there's a building back here with a little bit of light on it. Cars back here. tree back there all right let's let's let do that alone for we'll let that dry and then we'll go do our detailed lights now let's put this big pole in here this is dark right down here see i'm using black now again and so i'm just gonna put that in there get that down because if you lose some dark that's okay because you can just get it back by putting black back into it that's what I find pretty interesting and fun because, you know, with watercolor, you know, you're kind of stuck with that, but not here. You're, you pretty much go back in because, again, it is acrylic. And I would do that even with watercolor. It's not, it's the same thing. Even with watercolor, I would do that. Darks. Okay, let's put this aside for, for a second and then we'll, we'll finish it up with the darks. Let's go back to our details of our of our light scene and see how it, it just shifts. The whole thing shifts. My it gets really light again. Let's put this up here. Let's get this picture out of the way. All right, so see how light it is now? All these things are so light now, way too light. Um, and so the thing is, I'll leave it. So I know it's maybe light, but if I leave everything like in here, the way it is really light, then I can just go in and this is my, I have to figure out my darkest dark, which is her. But look at even that became pretty light. And so you can either do that, keep it at that level. And so if that's the darkest dark, then just do your detailed dark lights, not quite as dark so that you don't, go and make your detail darks as light as as dark as the darkest dark. So it's all about how the levels of darkness, you know, and um, so let's just go from the back forward. And so then we'll determine how much darker I gotta get with things. Let's just start right here with this little guy. And this is my detail dark. So I'm gonna work my detail with my round, smaller round brush. And I'm just gonna go in and start detailing Detailing with darks. And uh, depending on how you know detailed you are as an artist, this is this all determine how detailed you want to be. Because some people like to get photographic with it. Some people like to get really loose. They're not, they don't get as um, photographic with it. And so it so all depends on what your style is. I'm going to make it probably a lot more 
um, looser than tight, like the photograph, um, because again of time and yeah, because of time. I mean, the, I could make it a lot tighter depending on how much time you have. And then I'm just gonna put some color in there too, because I just don't want to make this thing one color. I just float things in there and get the darks, a little shadow underneath there. And I'm working from back forward and I'm trying to get these darks in there. And this does act a lot differently from paper. So you gotta just watch yourself. You gotta watch what you're doing because you have to know with material how it works. You know, every material that you use usually works a little bit differently. This is board, so it's not gonna act like paper exactly. So you have to just know what it's gonna do. Do you need more water? Do you need more pigment? And for this, you need more pigment because it's absorbing so much. And um, so I figure with acrylics, you can use more pigment then too. And then see how I'm getting dark and I'm gonna put all these darks in that need to be dark. And then right here, I'm gonna start with black, but I'm gonna go with orange because I want that to feel like, like the sun again is burning this, this detail up. And so it's gonna to turn to orange. These details are gonna be orange because the sun is right there and it's just blindingly bright right there. Maybe you have this up here too, because it's just hitting the back or the side of something right here can be the side. And again, because I'm using acrylic, I can just put it on thick. I don't have to worry that it's, you know, not gonna be accepted to a show because you're using white. Like, like TWSA, you can't use white, but here it doesn't matter because it's acrylic and we're gonna make it, we're gonna just make it look beautiful. And I gotta look at my, oh, so that goes all the way over to here. You gotta look at my picture and see what's going on over here. So my picture states that this is all kinds of really geese stuff here and so. And yes, I'm just using black by itself and I can put other colors in there too. I can start out with black and then I can throw a little bit of orange on the side there. And even though it's acrylic, you can you know float or just smear other colors on top. Let me use my little bit bigger brush. And always remember though, this is acrylic. And so when you clean your brushes, don't just rinse them out a little bit, really rinse them out because um, they will dry hard as a rock and you don't want to do that to your watercolor brushes. I'm going to get a little bit dark in here to show that this is some kind of building over here. I don't want too much detail over here, so I'm not going to give it too much detail. I'm going to get a little dark. See how it just comes together now? And little by little, it's just going to start appearing to be beautiful because this is the time for it. Now you get your darks in there. Now it's when it becomes something. Before it can't become anything because you don't have your detailed darks and it always goes through the uglies. Irving Shapiro, my teacher, always said, your paintings gotta go through the uglies before it gets down to the beauties. Because that, you don't have your um, details in there yet. And so your detailed darks, and that's what indicates things, what's going on in, in your painting. Let's get this nice and dark. Got to follow the, the, the pattern or the um, perspective. I got to make sure I get the perspective right on these buildings. And now I'll put some other colors in there too. I said I wanted to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more blue, a little bit more cooler colors back here as it comes back. So that's what I'm going to do. And I don't even know what's really happening over here on this side, but I can fake it by just putting some darks in there, putting some rectangle shapes. Some, you know, it's it's out of focus anyways in the photograph, so that's fine. You just make it dark, and you lose the edges. Lose edges. Oh, it's so much fun to lose edges, especially in watercolor where you get some soft edges where you just lose them. Now the street itself is um, probably a little bit grayer back here. I'm gonna make it a little wet. I'm gonna make it look a little wet. And then there's this curve or thing in there. And I'll throw this down into there a little bit. 
And now I'm kind of using it more like acrylics when I use it this thick. I'm doing a little bit of both. I'm kind of putting, a, a make it thick like acrylics. You know, almost like even like an oil, you know, it's really thick. I can make swatches. I can really go in there with a thick amount of paint and I can just make it like a, a brush stroke. You know, and then it'll look really, it'll look really cool because it's a little bit different from what the watercolor part looks like. And so you can make it look a little bit acrylic like so you get a little bit of both. I, that's what I like about this is I can get a little bit of both or a little bit of everything in there. I don't have to be just stuck with one type of um, you know, medium. And I would still call it um, water media because that's what I'm doing. I would call it water media. I wouldn't call it a watercolor because it's not watercolor, even though it looks like one. So you just call it water media. I'm here I'm gonna put little lines in there. These lines get a little bit darker too. Now let's go to this side. We got that side buildings pretty close. A little dark right here. All right, onto this side. So in the picture, this gets pretty dark right here. So let's go pretty dark. I'm gonna go warm. It's still far back, so I'm gonna go pretty warm with it back here. And use my smaller brush. Warmer in the distance, it gets cooler as it comes forward. And then we can fake a little bit of whatever is up here again, faking the, the look of it. Because I don't know, I, I'm too far away from the photograph to know what that actually is. It looks like a bunch of stuff happening up here. Now, if I were in my studio, I'd probably do it a little bit differently because I need to, um, you know, I, I work slower and I work more precise on what maybe the drawing is. But that doesn't mean, um, you know, sometimes I almost like working faster like this because then I don't see all the little things. I kind of stick with what, you know, go fast and then you just get what you kind of need. You just need a few things to make something look um, like what it is. Let's make this a... Uh, Make this an orange flag here, like it's it kind of lit up with the orangeness of the. I'm not going to actually make it a certain type of flag from a country because I, I have no idea where this is from or what this is, where this is. I get a lot of my photos that I do on Thursday night from sites online that um, that give you copy copy free imagery. You know, copy, um, copy written stuff that isn't, it's um, royalty free. You know, what do you call that? But um, yeah, so I just use those pictures because anybody can use them. You can use it for anything. Ads, um, they're all no, no copyright. And that way the students can use it. And if you do something good, hey, you can use it. And the, the places I go to are called unsplash.com. Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com and Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot com. Those are three places that I go to to pick up some of the imagery for my demos and for things that I need to, you know, if I'm doing something that I want to kind of teach and I don't actually have that kind of, because I'm not a great photographer, um, I'll just go there and pick something up for the teaching, for the ability to teach it. What were those three sites again? The first one was Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H, Unsplash.com. The second one was Pixa, P-E-X-E-L-S, Pix, Pixel, P-E-X-E-L, Bay, Pixabay. Or does there, is an, there may be an A in the end of that, Pixabay, Pixel. No, it's just P-E-X-E-L.com, Pixels. Pixel.com. And the third one is Pixa, P I X A B A Y, Pixabay. And they're all royalty free images, royalty free. You won't get in trouble by using them. You won't be getting in trouble on painting them because they do not have any copyright to them. 
and they stated it right into the right into the um, website. They even let them use them for like if you're doing an ad for something or whatever, you can use it. They want people to use their um, their artwork or their their photographs. They're hoping, I'm guessing, that they want somebody to use them their like a big place to use their photography and stuff and get them get known and stuff. But um, it's great. Um, it's pretty amazing that they give that away to some of the people. You can um, put their name down. Um, like I can put my name, their names and stuff. And I did that for a while where I would put their name and that's give them credit, but you don't have to, it's not necessary. They ask for it, but you don't have to. It even says that you do not, you don't have to. If you want, you can. So inside here, I'm going to put a little glow, like it's glowing in the inside here. I'll put a little bit of orange in there to glow it up. I think there's a little glow coming from there. Same thing with maybe up here in this little crevice there. I'll put a little bit of, a little bit of warmth in there. And since I, again, because I, I don't, I can't really see a lot of the detail that's in there, I just make it up. I've done enough buildings and I've I worked as an illustrator for many, many, many years, always designing everything from my imagination. So I can pretty much do that where I just make things up because that's what I had to do for work for 25 years. Everything I drew had to be made up. So I can make a lot of stuff up because I've done enough drawing to know and I've done enough seeing. You know, when I look at stuff now, I look at it and I memorize it. And so um, I'm kind of trying to bring out a book to teach that. And um, it's been about five years now. I'll be out pretty soon, I'm thinking. I, I got a little bit of time now coming up. I'm going to see if I can't get that thing going. <laughs> it's already written. I just got to get the pictures for this for the sketchbook. It's a sketchbook that shows you how to draw from your imagination and not always be so having to have the picture in front of you. Let's see what's this. This is like I'll even put things in there that are not in there, you know, be just because I know it would make a good make a good composition for myself. I stand up here a little bit so you know I might see my head, but that's okay. You're watching the painting anyways. <laughs> I hope you are. <laughs> take a different brush now. I want to take a my flat brush because I gotta get some bigger parts done. I like flat brushes for buildings because you can get so much done with a flat brush that you can't get done with a, um, you know, everything is rectangular, right? And so with a flat brush, a flat brush is rectangular. So it's a lot easier for buildings to use a flat brush than a round brush, especially like this. So I can just, you know, one brush stroke, you can get the whole window. With a round brush, you'd have to do like four strokes to get to each corner. Some color in this. Boom, one window, right? That's all you need, one window. And then while it's wet, a lot of times what I have to do is go back into that wetness and throw some color in there. Because then it, it kind of does its own thing. If I put some color that's even, even when it's thick, it doesn't matter. It's fun to put other colors in there besides the one color that you started with. Like there's a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. Then you get this edge here. Make this nice and dark, like you're seeing in there. We'll cut out the shape of my woman here. A little bit slower so I can get the shape of her correctly. And now she's being, see, she comes forward because of having it dark. And at the same time, I can get these parts dark. And I may have to get these other part the wall itself darker. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Run there real quick. No, I still got enough time. When are you guys thinking of getting done? Because I have to. I always have to know what time because then I I rush faster. <laughs> now usually uh, meeting goes to about nine. Nine. Okay. 
Yeah, so you get uh, a little about, bit over half an hour, and I'll get it done by then. Yeah. That's the way I work. <laughs> I've always worked like I need a time limit because if I don't have a time limit, I'll just keep on going forever. <laughs> okay, you got you got five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's gonna be very it's gonna be a very fast painting then. David, what was that quote that you gave earlier about um a few minutes ago? Um, Irving Shapiro said something. I didn't catch it. Uh, what was that? That was um, oh, what was that? I said um, I know it was over here. We're doing something over here. What was it? What was the code that we were talking about? Something to remind me. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> Somebody's got to remember what I was talking about over here. There's something over here. Remember? Hmm. Well, you can always rewatch the video on, on Facebook if you want. Oh. Or we'll be sending a link out to it for you to. Okay, thank you. I'll see if I can remember. I, I'll probably come back to me. Let me just see. <laughs> I'm sure you said a lot. <laughs> something about yeah, he, something has to be ugly before it becomes beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, he said, uh, Shapiro always said that um, you got to get the painting goes through its uglies before it gets to be. Um, where it gets good and you have to go you know it's the, the first part of your painting not until the end does it get good so you, you gotta have a painting go through its uglies thank you <laughs> yeah he did say a lot of things that i um boy he had a lot of things that he said one of the things though that he did say was never to use white but um i'm breaking those rules so now he's rolling in his grave <laughs> well isn't that because of aws they had their rules yeah, TWSA. TWSA had TWSA. the rules of that. And... Transparent. So since I don't want her so um, perfect, what I do is I go in, I just get a hints of it because I don't want, she's not the um, too interesting over here. I don't want her to be the center of interest. Anytime you do too much interest on a face, you tend to give it too much and then you'll look over there too much. And so I just want to make it so that she, you can see her, but I don't want to make it so that she's that important that you're going to be looking only at her. Yeah, Dave, so I think someone, just, I'm someone sorry? commented that you said something about keep losing edges. Oh, that's another, yeah, that's um, that's the one I had said. I don't know if Shapiro said that, but um lost edges that's my favorite thing now is to um lose your edges with watercolor like when something is blurry not everything has to be so detailed i know a lot of people a lot of people are painting um hyper realism which is, is a really great if you're doing that kind of style but if you're not doing hyper realism and you're doing more of an impressionistic style you want to lose some edges you want to do some you know um edges so that they're lost um so they just like you lose the edge and I like to do that with lost edges. I like to do that with soft edges, where like this face is just you lose the edges. You don't need to see everything. You know it's a lady. You don't have to get everything about her into that into that shot because she's not that important over here. And so you lose the edges. And it's sort of almost like if you're doing a picture and it's out of focus, that area is out of focus. And so you know what it is, but you don't need to explain every single little detail in there. Enough just so you know that it's, you know, oh, yeah, she's got her hand there. She's got, this is her body. That's all you need to know. And the rest is deep, is not detailed. And I'm going to keep it at that. No, uh, and I like, I rather see that than have everything in focus. Okay. It gives you more mood. It gives you a little bit more mood. It's more impressionistic. I'm more of an impressionistic than a hyper realist, you know, and it all depends on what you like. You know, there's a lot of different kinds of styles and you just got to decide what you like. And I, I would never go against those people that do that. I mean, that's it's really cool. I couldn't do it. I, I can't do that kind of style. But, um, you know, everybody goes ahead. Everybody has a different style. And that's kind of a good thing. <laughs> we don't all the same style. And so you do what you have to do. And you just you get your style by just painting a lot. The best way to get a style is paint all the time. Paint, paint, paint. And you don't have to even paint um, decent pictures. You can do just a bunch of garbage pictures that you just want to do just to keep yourself busy 
and you still, even if you're not great, they're going to learn. Each painting you do, you learn more and more on. I mean, I had I have thousands of pictures that I did that I would never even show. You know, it's just not every picture you do, do is turns out. The, um, the more you paint, the more you get the where you like them. You know, you definitely get a lot more that are really nice. But you know, when you get better, then you also your um your ability to wanting to make them even better is always there. So I, it's like, yeah, that's nice, but boy, I like this better, this one better from this guy. And so you're always trying to try to get better and better and better. Yeah, well, Dave, you know, what I learned uh, from photography is that I used to take a lot of pictures and I would look at them and think, oh, these are okay, or no, they're not that good. But the more pictures I took, the fewer bad pictures I took because I recognized what, what I was doing wrong in them. Yeah, yeah. So or you pick up something, more, you pick up something that you really do really well, and that becomes your style because yeah. you like that way of taking a picture. And so then you learn it's like, you know what? I like taking pictures like that. It, it's it's the old saying about you learn more from your mistakes than you do from doing it right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's just, you know, the easiest way to learn something is just keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. It's um, you know, I do a lot of painting and um I don't ever, you know, I get to a point where not, and even right now I've been doing so many demonstrations that I'm getting really good at demonstrating because I just do so many of them and I, and I get faster. I mean, I have I used to never do two paintings all the time, but now I'm so fast. Sometimes I, when I get, when I have to do a painting in an hour, then they still have two, an hour left in the demonstration. I'm just like, well, okay, let's do another one <laughs> because then it's kind of like it's boring. Just and, and I don't like to go slow. I don't want to go slow because that's not my style. I just like to get in there and get out and get it done. So this one will be done in a few minutes. This one will be done. You know, it's going to be. Um, I'm not going to go super detailed. I will probably put some things in the foreground. You know, in or like uh, the street will have cobblestone, and I'll put a few of those in there. And you know, but. That's about as detailed as I'll get. And back here, we'll do some things that just make it look a little bit more detailed. And now she has got to be the darkest, the most colorful. She's got to stick out like really far because that way it'll make it look like she's the center of interest. So we'll make her hair on the side and I always make my women redheads. <laughs> Just the thing that I do. And I'm just gonna go in there with really dark and I'm putting it on pretty thick and where it's not on the edge, I'm gonna put it almost with black because I need it to be dark. And then usually on the collar on your, on your shoulder, it usually is lighter because it rolls over. And then I'll give her, um, I don't know, let's see, give her a, maybe a red, a red coat. Because it's pretty warm, everything. And, and now I noticed that one thing I want to do, and good thing I'm doing an acrylic, is that since the sun is hitting this side, this building doesn't have any of that light in it, right? And so that looks kind of weird. And so what I'm going to do is, like, good thing we're doing acrylic, I can just go in there. I would do the same thing with um, watercolor. I would just use it opaquely, or I'd rub it out and put it back in. But this side, I'm going to make more orange and yellow and hit this with some um, light. So that this side looks like the sun is also hitting that edge. And then just blend it into this area. Same thing with the with the um, flag itself. I'll put a little bit on that edge. And since I did it back there, then I have to do farther than back too. So I'm just gonna hit a couple spots back here with that. Just getting the glow, just get a little bit of a glow back there. Make that building just slightly darker too, so that it doesn't stand out so far. Just a little bit more. Just do that with a, and also that, that'll give me a chance to do a little highlight around her, a little rim lighting of her around her. You 
in this way that I guess you could say that, you know, acrylic is a little bit more forgiving than watercolor. But I, like I said, I also do this for watercolor too. If I find I'm doing something wrong or I didn't get something, I go back in. I go back in a lot. You can go back into watercolor just as much as acrylic. It's just sometimes it doesn't get as fresh if you don't get it quite in the first wash. But the more you do, you get faster and faster and you get more and more direct with your washes and everything is good. Like I said, I'm gonna make it really dark. Even the side just a little slightly lighter. And look how she's standing out. All of a sudden she's standing out more and more and I'm gonna give her some really dark pants. And then I decided that I'm gonna make the whole street up here a lot darker because it has to look like the light is starting here, but I'm gonna make this a lot much, much more dark. And because if I squint my eye in this picture, I'm gonna do cobblestone, but first I'm gonna give this wash a nice, nice dark wash across the front here. I'm just gonna go in with the dark, and that means I'm gonna probably have to darken her even more, which I should do anyways, because I'm gonna go into her a little bit, because I want this to set back and bring this down here a little bit. And at the same time, I say, oh, uh, I'm gonna start making, um, Cobblestones with my brush. I use my flat brush. Let me take a just a beer. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and so let's go through here and just do some cobblestones. Thirty-six. What do we still got to do on it? Dark paper. We don't have to do that much when it comes to the lighting. So we'll get done. We'll get done by nine, hopefully. Cobblestone gets bigger as they come down. He's going and definitely go smaller as they go back. And I'm going to try to make them darker as they go back too. And I use a little bit of water. And the thing is, like, I if this were, you know, if I want to go even farther after if it's over, and I feel like I want to make start making it a lot thicker and make it look more like an oil or an acrylic, like a thick acrylic. Which actually you think it really looks like an oil. I could do that too still. I mean, I can still keep on going if I want. It's all up to you. You know, you're you're the artist, you decide on how far you want to go, how far you want to take it. This just happens to be a demonstration, but you can take it, you know, I can take it a lot farther. Little texture. Now my big brush. Stand up here a little bit. A little warm. I said. Oh, I said I wanted to cool back here. So let's make it cool. A little warm. So again, lost edges, these, these parts are not that important. So now I'm gonna go opposite. I'm gonna take pull out some of this color and that way it'll look like the, it's opposite of what I just did. The brick will be a little bit lighter and the, and the mortar in between it will be darker. And so you can do that too. And then the redness of her coat will be reflected into the street a little bit. And then you'll know, wisp it a little bit. And then one more thing here with this lady, I want to give her a little bit darker because she is starting to stand out too much. 
and I or I wanted her to like fall back here a little bit. So I'm just lose the edge a little bit. Bring it up. And then rub out, rub out a little bit. All right, how does that look? Any, any good? Beautiful. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, one more. Let me go back to my black paper and we'll look at this again and see if there's any other things to do on it. So it's good to take it, get away from your image and then come back to it. Remarkable. Let me go there to the white and then, uh oh, I have a little bit of white in here. There's my board. Hold on. underneath there real quick. Put our pictures back up. Hold on one second. So all we have to do here now is I'm going to get the little details. And that's always the easy. That's the fun part. The, the, the small parts are always the thing that makes it look good. Just like the dark parts that I did in the last painting. Now here's going to be all the light parts. All the little light parts that are, make it look like it's going to, you can tell what things are. And like when I start with the um, lights, I'm going to start from the back and work my way forward and find my most interesting part. And so I learned to do um, lights by putting warm around first, put like a little light, like a reddish tint across things. So it goes come from a red to a yellow. The spectrum of light is that it goes from a white to a yellow to an orange to a red. And then a the red just kind of bleeds into the background. So I'm going to just kind of go in here with a warm color and just kind of blend it into the background little by little. So I'm, just, I'm right now doing some of the light sources. These are light sources. This is what's going to be the light. And it looks really weird now that there's little things of red there, but I'm going to take orange now and get a little bit, a little bit lighter, bleeding it, bleeding it from orange, from red to orange, to yellow, to white. Yellow. And this one, I'm gonna go orange. And if you mix the red with the um, orange and with the yellow, it makes the orange. So you don't actually have to even use orange. Though I'm mixing this really bright orange, which is kind of nice that it gets there right away. This makes it soft. I, I am kind of making this edges soft on my own. And um, where I'm not using what the watercolor technique, I'm using more of a, a acrylic technique because I'm blending it myself. But it's such a small thing, I want to do that. I don't want to sit there and have to do it with I could also do it with an airbrush, but I don't have it here with me at the moment. So I'm gonna actually just show you how to do it this way. <laughs> I'll have to show you the airbrush next time when I'm I'm there live. <laughs> Put a little edge on these things too. We'll hold you to that. Okay. Now the edge of now we're gonna get some white, some pure white. And just take a thick thing of white and make a little dot. Because the light itself is actually a white, and then the light around it is going to be yellow. And I learned this from Carl Bretsky. So if you want to look up Carl Bretsky, who's an oil painter, he taught me how to do this. And um, I should have put the yellow in there first before I put the white, though.
Put the yellow first. Yellow comes first before the dot, dot of white. So you gotta get the yellow first. And then there's always the the um, light that hits on the edges of the of the light pole. And all this stuff you can learn yourself by just going outside and looking. Look, look, look when you're out there. It's all out there for you to see and sketch and um, just, it's all there and you just have to, you know, even when you take photographs of it, you can see. And I'm making the tops of those windows and stuff warm because again, this light is warm. And so now I'm gonna take white, pure white. And I'm taking my um, thicker white to make the little dots. And of course, things that are shiny will reflect that little dot, the little dot of white. So you're going to see a lot of reflections because that's what happens you, um, with shiny objects. They reflect. And some parts are bigger and some parts are smaller. But basically, you're reflecting all that light now all over the place on all the metal objects that you see. And all the, everything I'm painting now is more like an acrylic. I'm doing it thick. I'm not wasting my time trying to do watercolor wash. Nope. Now it's, it's basically acrylics. It's acrylic look now. Yeah, and while you're doing that, I just want to remind people uh, to go out to our YouTube channel and check out the video interview that I did with you. Uh, because <clears throat> Dave's doing a very interesting project, fascinating project on painting uh, pictures that uh, vets, veterans have uh, sent to him or that he's found. Uh, and he's planning on doing a uh, show of those at some time in the future. Yep. But uh, it's, uh, it's on his website, but uh, the interview on the video in the uh, YouTube channel, uh, we talked about a couple of interesting things like that. So I think it's worth your while if you're interested, go out and and check it out. Thank you. What I'm doing now is getting the details and making things look like, you know, they're dark and here we got a window, putting my black back in. Because all that dark that I, I, I got rid of, I can put it back in simply with by adding dark on top of this. I put my street signs and cracks in the street. Get that all back in there. Get my telephone pole. That over here, there's a telephone pole. I, I think I just put this in I, I, by myself. There wasn't actually one there, but I just wanted one, so I just decided to put it back in. So I'm definitely putting back thing, things back in, but that's because I want to get my big washes. So these are my these are my details, and so that's what you do. You you go back to the details of things. I'm also getting rid of some of the white chalk that I had on there because I'm going to put some lighter parts in there yet, um, but I'm kind of taking, I'll be putting like signs in here and different colored things. And, and again, this is the part that is um, the most fun, but probably the most boring to watch because I'm basically just looking at the photograph and making up whatever I see. Like if I see it's really light in a spot, I just go in and I make a light there. Like right here, there's a light right there and it goes down. I'm not quite sure what it is back there that I'm, I'm painting because it's such a small imagery that I'm, I'm working from. 
And if I'm in a studio, I'm or if I'm actually there at the place, then I can actually see exactly what I'm I'm painting. But here it doesn't really matter. It's just it's it's a light. What it is, it's I'm sure side of a wall. It's either a window or brick or and I know it's one of those because that's all that's there. Here we get a little stein. There's all those signs on the on the on the sidewalk here or on the, on the pole. I still don't have all the light to where it should be. I still have to make the light, like this one, this one here needs to be a little white. But I mean, underneath here, all these things that are lit up because of that. So there, I'm gonna go now and just make make these things really bright and really thick with a lot of paint. And this is very, this is very, um, what do you call it? The style is very um, post-impressionistic. It's not super, super detailed, but again, I'm not, I'm not a super detailed painter. I'm more um, a post-impressionistic painter. I've always have been, and that's, that's kind of what the school was. That's what the, the school taught me at the American Academy of Art, is to be that kind of artist. I mean, that's what we all did. We all wanted to be the next sergeant or, you know, all those, all those, all those post impressionist artists. Almost done. A few more things here. I put too much red down here. So every time I blend it, it goes back to red. And so I'm just going to poke out some of that. Okay, if I, I'll put in another plug here for you while you're doing that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> on uh, Dave's website, uh, you're also going to find that uh, along with his uh, uh, finished work, he also has for sale uh, paintings that he's done in demos like this. So uh, they're very good, uh, nice value to them. So that's something else you should go out and check out. Uh, again, I'll plug in the Lake County Art League YouTube channel. There are other interviews of other artists and demos out there. Uh, so visit Dave's website in particular and uh, see what he's got out there. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I do. I post every morning. I post a um, painting of the day. And they're all, um, it got me through COVID because um, I, I used to have a gallery up in um, McHenry that I closed down, but um, because I, all my business went away, uh, I, all my teaching, everything went away. So I just started selling all my paintings, all my demonstrations like this tonight. Uh, though this is a little bit bigger than those, those are all um, quarter sheets. It's the, it's basically the the paintings that I do in classes and stuff. And I was selling them now for $90. They will be going up come come the new the new year. They're going to go back up to regular prices, but until then, until Christmas is over and you, everybody gets what they want. But right now, you have a section of about you know about well, I have eight hundred up there, but uh, a lot of them sold. But uh, so there's probably a good six hundred up there, up still the, up there. And like I said, they're all they're all nine eighty. What is it ninety dollars? If I were at if I came to you live, then you get them for eighty bucks. But <laughs> since I'm not there live, um, you just order them online for ninety dollars. It's still a very good value because they're actually originals. They're not they're not prints. People always ask me, are they prints? Are they prints? How come they're so cheap? No, I just put them there because you know I have so many and I was saving my business <laughs> through um, through that. And so I keep on doing that until until January, and then I'll go back to regular prices. All right, let me just do a few more things here and then we're gonna call it a day. I think we're almost at nine o'clock. Like I said, we're gonna be done at nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make sure that people have enough time to get safely home. Yep. <laughs> there ain't anything like my house, it's sometimes a little bit dangerous 
walking from the den to the bedroom. As the, cat, <laughs> the cat is sometimes <laughs> there right in the middle, you know, just look. Anybody have some questions before I get done here? No questions? Are you all asleep? <laughs> Did I put you to sleep? Did I put you guys to sleep? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Will these paintings be on sale on your website for $90? Uh, not these. These are a little bit bigger, so they're, they're usually double the. Um, oh. These are full. These are full, these are half sheets, and so the other ones are quarter sheets. Oh, I see. So these are these will probably be like 120 instead of the 90. Still sounds like a good deal. Yeah, it's still a good deal. Mind. They're just they're they're you know it all goes by the size, and these are these are double the size of my other demonstrations because normally I just work quarter sheet. And um, this is just bigger. This is this is half sheet. These are like as you can tell, it's like quarter sheet. Is my where's my quarter sheet size? <laughs> then oh, here's a quarter sheet. And here actually here's one I did of this one scene, which I um hold on. Oh, what did I just do? Nobody didn't knock you guys out. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. Well then, uh oh. Let me get out of this something. I did something wrong here. <laughs> well, we can still see you. Okay, yeah, good. You're good. Okay. Yeah, we you're still good. see you. In the All right, well, I'm going to keep it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, one more thing. It just is not red enough. This one <laughs> light is not red enough. Let's make this a little bit redder. Uh oh, now I, now I messed it up. <laughs> Some water in here. Hold on. The nice thing is, it's acrylic, so I can go back in and just put stuff on top of it. <laughs> there we go. Let's get that back. Nice and dark. And that'll dry evenly. Right now it's wet. You can see what it looks like when it's wet. It's always when it's wet, it's a little bit darker. And there's a little droplet right here. Okay, we're gonna call it quits and let me show you what I did with the other one still. So here's the other one. And they're so big that I usually I can put both of them in at the same time because I do quarter sheet on Thursday night, I do quarter sheet. But there's your um there's your half sheet. And I will put a couple of lines in here. I like a little bit um the of the I want to have some because in Europe they usually have like little lines going across. And this I feel it needs some of those lines going across here. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it, guys. I'm gonna leave it at that. Good job. Well done. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me and hopefully next time we can do this live. I can really show you live up because it's always hard to see you. <laughs> the actual, actual thing. And I'll post these on my Facebook page and on my Instagram. And so these will be on there and they'll be they'll be a little bit more detailed because you'll be able to see them. <clears throat> then like I said, a lot of times these images, when it comes to the cameras like this, they make them a lot brighter than they are. Because it's a lot, when I look at my screen, it's a lot darker than what you see uh, for the image in here. But um, but there you have it. There's the two. And so okay. I will post them. And then you can watch it again and again. Because I guess um, Jeff says he's recording this. And so, and I'll put it on my website too. All right. Thank you, Dave. Okay, thank you, Dave. Uh, thank, no you. Problem. thank you. Thank you. And for all those people that joining us that weren't members of the Lake County Art League, you're perfectly welcome to join us in future demonstrations. Uh, we have, uh, especially, we're going to do virtual demonstrations in January, February, and March. And we've got at least one internationally known pastel artist that's uh, agreed to do a demo for us. So that's going to be extremely interesting. Uh, but anyone's welcome to join. Okay.
And Dave, I'll no. be talking to you about uh, doing a workshop for the Art League, too. All right, that's Jim? Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's me. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I think we're, we're thinking about an April time frame for a two-day workshop. So. Yep, that'd be sound great. I just, uh, I was just thinking about the one, the one weekend is Easter. So I, I just don't want to do it on the weekend of Easter. <laughs> no. Yep. <laughs> Sounds okay, good. Very good. Okay. Well, thanks well, again, thank you guys. Dave. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you. Talk to you later. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Very nice, David. Thank thanks. you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, I'm going to sign out. <clears throat> All right. Unless you, have, unless you have some more questions for me. <laughs> I think we're done. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. 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 Talk to you later. Thank bye. you. Everyone. Have a great week. Okay. All done. Okay. Take care, I'm Jeff. Gonna, I'm going to close the meeting for everyone here. I'm going to kick you all out.